Welcome to the third video in Mobidax tutorial series. How to deploy a centralized cryptocurrency trading platform using open source software. I hope you guys are as excited about this video as I am. We have dozens of customers running their exchange platforms using our setup. But this is the first time we will share Mobidax Docker Swarm deployment in public. In this video, we will create two virtual machines and provision them using Docker Swarm. In our testnet deployment tutorial, we used Docker Compose. So let's review the difference between the two. Docker Compose is a tool for running multi-container applications on Docker defined using the Compose file format. A Compose file is used to define how the one or more containers uh, that make up your application are configured. Uh, Docker Compose can only be run on a single virtual machine. Docker Swarm is a group of physical or virtual machines that are running the Docker application and have been configured to join together in a cluster. For production environment, Docker Swarm is most suitable. It has great scalability and allows you to balance the load between virtual machines efficiently. So let's get right into it. All right, guys, now let's go ahead and create our instances. So let's launch an instance. We will use Ubuntu in this case. Now we need two instances, one of which will have a dedicated uh, SSD. Uh, that one we need for actually uh, full, full nodes, full Bitcoin and Ethereum node. And we need them a big SSD, so we'll uh, go with this one, i3 2x large. And this will, this will give us a lot of resources and actually enough for uh, two full nodes, one for Bitcoin and one for Ethereum, uh, to be deployed here. So let's go here. Uh, let's review and launch storage. Yep, everything good. Now we need to create <clears throat> a new key pair. Uh, that one we need for, uh, to actually access uh, the VM. Uh, so this is your typical key pair for SSH access. So let's launch that instance. Now it's launching, so let's go ahead and uh, create a, another one. So as I already mentioned for Docker Swarm, we actually need two instances. Uh, but uh, this one, we don't actually require a dedicated SSD to it because this one will just have Docker on it and applications running. So we'll go with something like uh, T3x large, and that's enough resources. So let's preview. And uh, here we'll actually allocate a little bit more storage than eight gigs. Uh, I would go with something like this, just to be on the safe side. So let's review and launch. Uh, all of that is good for us uh, as of now. Uh, security group is good. Um, we might want to edit the security group of our uh, manager VM, but uh, that will be done in the later videos. So let's select this key pair we've just created and launch the instance. Right, uh, let's see how our instances are doing, uh, whether, whether they are, okay, it seems like they are both running. Uh, so next thing we have to do is we have to install Docker on them, but first let's move our, uh, SSH key right here, and then let's SSH, so that was this, let's SSH to our VM, we go like this, yes, <laughs> all right, you actually need to also to do a CH mode on the key, uh, so that it can be used in the SSH process, that's my uh, system password, so let's go ahead and SSH, right, we are in the machine, so let's see. Uh, we also need to SSH to the second machine. So that will be it, and IP address right here. So now we are here, yeah, cool. So we've SSH to both machines, um, and the next thing we have to do is we have to install Docker. I just use a regular link for Docker installation, and I'm going to install it on this and on this machine. So I'll just do it simultaneously. 
this process is uh, simple, easy, it works every time because it's um, uh, official documentation. So I do actually encourage you to use it. Yes, we want to. Yes, we want to. <clears throat> right, so let's do that and that. Now, excuse me, so also add the key. Uh, also add repository. Yep. Update. And install the actual Docker. Yep. And yep. This should be pretty fast. Uh, usually it doesn't take uh, long. Uh, so, yeah. After that we should be good to go. Okay, let's see docker ps. Okay, what about sudo docker ps? Yeah, so we have uh, docker installed. Uh, our Ubuntu user is just not um, able to access it, but we will fix that in a later stage. Uh, we have docker running and that is great. Now the next thing we have to do is we have to actually configure uh, our log driver. Um, that is uh, done because uh, docker uh, usually spits a lot of logs and sometimes you can get your disk overfilled with those logs. So you need to have some log rotation in order to avoid um, that mistake and um, you know in order to make the system stable. So let's do just that. Uh, in this folder we need to create uh, this file and just paste it in. Uh, all right, I guess I had to do it with pseudo permission. Uh, yep, so let's do the same on this machine as well. Demon.json. All right, that's done. So let's do systemctl restart docker uh, as well with sudo. Uh, sorry for this typo. There we have it. So now log rotation should be in place. Okay, that's good. Now we have Docker on both of our machines, but they are not communicating with each other. They are just working, uh, you know, separately. They don't know about the existence of one another. So we need to actually fix that. Uh, in order to do so, we have to initialize our swarm. And uh, actually, we will uh, we need to choose a manager and um, a worker node. So for our manager, I think we will go with. Let's see. I think we need uh, this instance to be the manager, which is two three eight. That's it. So let's initialize worm on this machine, and as well we have to do it with sudo. All right, and then we will join that swarm uh, with our um, worker node. So let's do that as well with sudo. And let's see whether that works. I'm guessing we might have an issue with the port not being open. So um, in real time, you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and um, show you how you can change the security group in order for that to work. Um, I'm pretty sure we're gonna have a timeout here. Yeah, there you have it. Um, all right, should have done it beforehand, but you know, sometimes that happens. So um, let's go to networking. And what do we have here? Network interfaces and um, all right. Uh, I, I'm guessing this should be, yep, under security and you can see there are some inbound rules but, and we have only um, port 22 open and that's tied to this security group and so right here we have to edit inbound rules and uh, we'll add a rule uh, where we have custom HTTP, uh, I think that's fine and we will have this uh, port source my IP, what's that? And that's not what we need anywhere. Not really. Custom 
custom, 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 and we want, we want, we want, we want. Um, right, let's open up another thingy right here. I just want to see my EC2 instances. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we have public IPv4, uh, but I'm actually interested more in this, uh, in the private IPv4 addresses. I'm wondering what's the subnet here. Mm. Right, 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 right. Okay, this is private IPv4. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm just, you know, uh, I want to do this because uh, actually Swarm has to be accessible only within uh, the, uh, only within, uh, with this uh, private network, uh, in contrast to SSH that has to be, has to have access, um, has to have access from the outside as well, so that I can SSH to these machines. So, uh, let's see, I mean, let's, um, I can actually compare this IP address, which is 44238, uh, this is 31. Okay, well, kind of hard to understand what the subnet here, uh, actually we have subnet ID, I think that should help. Uh, let's see right here. Okay, yeah, there you have it. We have, a, uh, we have the subnet here. Uh, awesome. So that's what we need here. That's like perfect. So let's save these rules. Okay, successfully modified. That is amazing. So now this should work for us. Okay, so this says that our swarm is actually already initialized, which could have been just at the second that I... Um, just as the second that I've updated the inbound rule. So let's see, docker node less, and that have to be with sudo. And actually we only have one machine here. So I'm guessing uh, this confused um, uh, with the timeout. It didn't actually understand that it um, couldn't join the swarm. So Let's try to, okay, so not let the swarm. Let's try this one more time. I think that should work. All right, and now, no, no the less. Yep, so there you have it. You can see right here so that we already have two nodes av available to us and we can distribute the load between these two nodes, which is a great sign. So now we can start working with this and start uh, deploying. And uh, Now that is a wrap for the third tutorial video. I hope you enjoyed it enough to hit the like button. Just kidding. I hope you learned something new and useful today. Uh, something that will stay with you beyond this deployment. In the next video, I will show you how to clone OpenDAX and fill in config file. Just another step closer. Leave your comments and subscribe to Movidex channel. Most importantly, join our Telegram community. The link is in the description. Have a great day everyone. See you next time.